Right here on the desk, we have NVIDIA's RTX 2060 graphics card. And I gotta say, this is gonna be my first time uh, actually hands-on with a Founders Edition 2000 series card. Now, there has been a bit of controversy surrounding this graphics card. It came out at $349, and people are saying it's too expensive compared to the predecessor, the GTX 1060, and also the one before that, the GTX 960. Now, my biggest critique before even going into this review is that it's got six gigabytes of VRAM when it's uh, stacking up against the GTX 1070 and also the 1070 Ti and 1080. And those graphics cards had eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now, of course, it does have GDDR6 versus 5X on those cards, uh, but that extra frame buffer on those predecessors does make it more attractive, especially if you're playing at 1440p with ultra textures on and some titles, it can get pretty demanding. But regardless, we will be taking a look at that today. We'll be comparing it against the RTX 2070 and also the GTX 1070 Ti Hall of Fame. This is one of the best 1070 Ti's you can get out there. And also another thing as well, this will be my first Founders Edition card for the RTX 2000 series I've had come through the channel here. So I'm gonna take a hands-on and see what this card's all about first physically and then we'll get on to the numbers. RTX 2060 through five different games and also two different simulated benchmarks. Now I did manage to overclock this card and quite well. We got an extra 170 megahertz roughly on the core clock and also an extra 870 megahertz on the memory. This enabled us not only to get those gains in those simulated benchmarks, but this also scaled over very well to the five different games that we tested here. However, before I test the other graphics cards out, I did manage to test out the fan speeds and also the temperatures on this graphics card. And I'll pull up a graph here for you guys where the sweet spot is definitely 60% fan speed. So if you put this on, and this is, the good news is here, we actually overclocked this graphics card for doing these fan speed and noise temperature tests. So this is pretty much a worst case scenario and this is doing extremely well. This is in a 28 degree ambient environment. So the Founders Edition card for the RTX 2060 is performing extremely well. It's gonna be very quiet. So you're looking at 42 decibels of noise and I'm actually sitting right beside it here now at 60% fan speed. So this is what you can expect gaming all day, every day with an overclock in pretty bad ambient temperatures. So that's a sweet spot for it. If you leave the fan speeds on auto and you just wanna overclock, the max you'll see is a 64% fan speed level. And this gets you around 43 decibels. And this will pretty much hold the same temperatures. I measured 64 degrees in Unigine heaven after about 10 minutes. And then looking at 80%, there is a massive jump here from 51 decibels up from either 42 or 43. And this uh, enabled us to get a five degree drop down to 59 degrees during Unigine Heaven. Upping this to 100% fan speeds, we managed to get 55 degrees. So this uh, scored 57 decibels. So basically in a nutshell with the Founders Edition card, the cooler that they've implemented does a phenomenal job of cooling, keeping the noise down and also keeping the temperatures down even when it's overclocked. But with that aside, we've still got another three different graphics cards here to test and overclock. So let's get that done for you guys. And here we are now with all the testing done. It actually took me a lot longer than the quick B-roll cut that we did uh, showing the cards being tested, but we've got now for you guys normal and overclocked figures. And we'll pull up here Shadows of the Tomb Raider because here's where things actually get very interesting for the RTX 2060. It's comfortably beating out the 1070 Ti. Uh, the RX 590 is behind, but that's in a different price bracket. And we'll talk about that in the conclusion. And then we got the RTX 2070 uh, pulling ahead. So all these cards in this graph are very important for the conclusion. Uh, but the interesting thing here was the overclocks on the RTX 2060 were performing very well at both 1080p and 1440p. And it was beating out the 1070 Ti. And that was the Hall of Fame edition. This thing here is an absolute beast. It overclocks extremely well, getting over 200 megahertz on the core clock and coming in pretty much with similar performance to a 1080 once it's overclocked. Uh, but moving over now to the next graph, 3D Mark Fire Strike. It's important to look at these results because here we saw the RTX 2060 only getting around a 10% gain with the overclocks. And the 1070 Ti did score a victory here. It's probably the only victory it scored versus the 2060 in today's video. But 
we look at also time spy extreme we can see a 10 percent gain and so these figures were a little bit weird for me because i've never seen this uh, when i've been testing graphics cards and that is that the overclocked figures in games were performing better than they were in synthetics and so we go back to shadows of the tomb raider the rtx 2060 is performing about 13 percent better with the overclock versus the 10 percent in the synthetic fire strike and also the uh, time spike stream so it was just a weird thing if you guys know why this is happening with this card then let us know in the comments section below uh, maybe it's got something to do with the uh, CUDA cores just breathing a lot better with GDDR6 but I don't really know the exact reason why but it's a great thing for gamers uh, because this card's going to respond very well getting pretty much 1080 levels uh, once you overclock it but moving on now to the next game We've got here Far Cry 5. This is pretty much an even score between the 1070 Ti and also the RTX 2060. Uh, RX 590 and also the RX, RTX 2070 are different fields, different price leagues. But the Founders Edition card, once we overclocked it, did edge out the 1070 Ti both at 1080p and also at 1440p. So this was a good result for the 2060 and moving into the next game, Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, here straight away we saw at 1080p the 2070 was actually starting to get a little bit CPU bound so it didn't respond that well to overclocks. Uh, but the 2060 did pull comfortably ahead of the 1070 Ti which then did pull comfortably ahead of the RX 590. Uh, so this was a good game to display the, I guess, the flexing of the 2060 over the Hall of Fame 1070 Ti uh, and both 1080p and 1440p we saw these numbers and this trend and moving to Battlefield 5 saw a similar story with the 2060 yet again pulling ahead at stock levels and also overclocked levels versus the uh, 1070 Ti Hall of Fame but what about the last game we got up here for you guys at 1080p and also 1440p this is Hitman 2 and uh, the RTX 2060 is scoring some very good numbers here at ultra settings 1440p numbers were also showing that this graphics card was scaling very well in comparison to the 1070 Ti, actually slightly losing, which now leads us on to the last graph, and that is the power consumption. These two graphics cards here, this was interesting. The 1070 Ti is actually pulling the lowest power consumption out of all the four cards here tested today, coming in around 250 watts, then 275 watts overclocked. RTX 2060 is scoring around 300 watts when you overclock it and about 270 out of the box. Then the RX 590 actually scoring around similar levels. And then the RTX 2070 with its higher performance is also juicing more power, uh, getting around 350 watts overclocked. But now we move on to conclusion time here with the price. And this is where things get pretty tricky because I'm gonna be making different recommendations for Australia versus the USA. Uh, if you're in America, 350 US dollars it's a decent price. It's not the best price and it's not the worst price I've seen on a graphics card, but it is a decent price. Uh, it's considering that's what you can get it for on amazon.com. Stock is readily available, not just for the Founders Edition card, but also the ARB partners have their cards out. I'm actually very keen to try the Gigabyte Mini, which comes in at 170 mil length for a special project. Uh, but this card itself, the Founders Edition card, for the lack of the two gigabytes of VRAM, it does make up for that big time with the build quality, with the thermals, and also those overclocks. So if you get one of these cards, you can comfortably overclock it and not have to worry about the card getting hot and also not making much noise at all. But also on top of that, you are paying extra money for that silicon, which a lot of people arguably wouldn't need, uh, but you do get DLSS support, ray tracing support, and that is starting to make its way into games. Quake 2 recently got a massive update full of ray tracing support. Battlefield 5 is also starting to play smoother, but the best thing coming out of the latest update, and I tested with this card specifically, is the G-Sync compatibility on the XG35 monitor, the 1440p ultra wide, 100 hertz from a Zeus. Uh, this card worked flawlessly in Battlefield 5. It was working with that adaptive sync. So that is another bonus, I guess, that NVIDIA have recently thrown in, which I honestly uh, thought is long overdue, but I'm glad to see that now you get adaptive sync on all those good value for money monitors, and it works with NVIDIA graphics cards. So basically, if you're in the US at $350, this card is decent. Uh, it definitely would be the card that I would buy personally 
it's the leader in its performance segment. It beats out the RX 590 comfortably. That costs uh, $290 or $280 currently on Amazon. And it even beats out, or will beat out, I believe, a Vega 56 uh, comfortably as well. And that costs more than this Gravis card. So the competition do need to step it up in this performance segment. Uh, as for the 1070 Ti, this thing beats it out comfortably as well, but it just has two gigabytes of less VRAM. Uh, so it is a decent buy in the USA, but here's where we're gonna move over to Australia now, where if you pay 600 Aussie dollars, I don't think it's uh, simply worth it. And we put the RTX 2070 in there for a reason, because you can pick one of these up for a little over 700 Aussie dollars, which for that extra price, I believe it offers better value for money. Uh, and so I would like to see Nvidia in Australia at the very least uh, drop the card to 500 asking price. I think that would be a better starting point because the AIB partners on Static Ice, they're charging around 620 Australian dollars, which I feel is just a little bit overpriced for what you're getting in Australia. And especially when you compare 350 US dollars converted to Aussie dollars, it comes well under $600, even if you account for GST. And the argument of us living overseas, it's more expensive for the parts, is a pretty moot point in this case when the RTX 2070 can be had for the price that it's at. So anyways, that was definitely a weird review. I've seen the uh, gaming numbers pull out ahead with the overclocks versus the synthetics. We've seen this be a decent buy in America for 350 US, but in Australia, I'd go for the RTX 2070. And with all that aside, if you enjoyed this review, then be sure to hit that like button, but also let us know in the comment section below what you think of the RTX 2060. Do you agree with what I'm saying or do you have another opinion? Love reading your thoughts as always. Drop a comment below. And also if you enjoy the content, you wanna see it the moment it's uploaded, then be sure to hit that sub button with notifications turned on. And if you want the latest scoop before it hits YouTube's loop, then be sure to check us out on Instagram, Tech yes City where I post up some of the projects before they hit the channel. And that's about it. I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. But I just sort of been illustrating these cards, the whole review by holding them up. And I'm pretty jet lagged as well. It's a weird feeling getting back from the US to Australia. This, this, this jet lag hit me hard, man. And I've got this accounting to do and, and uh, anyway. Catch you in the next one. Bye.